CJ here with my August 2015 manga pickups. Uh, this one's going to be a little different from last month. Normally I want to do these videos with a camera, just go over each of the manga I've got one by one, but I have a bit of an issue with my camera this month, so we're going to do it by webcam instead. First off, we have an issue I actually forgot to show you guys last month. This is a silent voice. I already have the first volume. If you are a fan of any manga, I mean just any manga, in fact, if you're not even a fan of manga, go pick this up. This story is absolutely incredible. Uh, it's a story about bullying, about disabilities, about friendships, and um, if my plans for becoming an English teacher go through, I plan on having this on my bookshelf in my classroom. This is absolutely incredible. It's a must-buy for me, and I'm really, really sad I left it out of last month's collection video. I also left out my Japanese volume of Tepu, number six. This is a sports manga about women's MMA, and it is, like, along with Aishul 21, the best sports manga I've ever read. It has an amazing protagonist. Unfortunately, it's not being licensed in English. I hope that with the series uh, coming out of hiatus and finishing, I hope that somebody picks it up, because the only legal way I could support the series was by just buying this volume in Japanese. Otherwise, you have to read it via scanlations, and that's a real bummer to me. But this this is incredible. Go pick it up. Next up, we have Attack on Titan 16. I'm collecting all of Attack on Titan, and uh, I was a little bummed out. I'm going to see if I can focus in a little bit with the camera there. You can see Amazon why. Sometimes Amazon, like, nicks my volumes when they come in the mail, uh, but whatever. Life goes on. I know there was a special edition of, it, of this with, like, a cover that you could, like, a sleep cover you could put over it by, like, a different artist, but I got this volume for I think it was like seven dollars on Amazon, and the collector's edition with the special cover and like trading cards was like eleven. And I was like, I don't really play with cards anyway, so it wasn't worth it for me. So I just got the regular one. Uh, but this is another great volume, and uh, hopefully the cover doesn't spoil too much for you anime-only fans. Next up, we have My Hero Academia. If you are a Shonen fan. And you are not reading this, you are kidding yourself. This is one of the best new shonens out there. Uh, it's by the author who did Barrage. Uh, I'm trying to think of the full title. I'll put the full title down there somewhere. Uh, that, vol uh, that manga got cancelled uh, after only two volumes. I was really upset by that. Uh, but it's really exciting to see this manga, uh, mangaka getting his break in this series, and it's well-deserved, too. Um, it's absolutely incredible. If you haven't read before, this hero on the cover is drawn like an American superhero, <laughs> unlike all the other characters who are drawn in manga style, and it's absolutely hysterical. This cover is really cool, too. I like how it looks like an American comic, and even on the back, you have, like, a fake advertisement like a lot of American comics have, so that's... That's pretty cool. And uh, this is one of the best first volumes I have for a long-running Shonen series, so I'll just say that much. The content in it is absolutely incredible. Yeah, definitely pick it up. Next up, it is good to be a Noragami fan. This is Noragami Volume 6. Uh, it was just released this month. In fact, I think starting October, their Kodansha Comics is going to be releasing uh, a manga volume of Noragami per month to catch up with the Japanese release. So that is super exciting. It's a really, again, a really great time to be an Noragami fan. Uh, this concludes my favorite arc of the series, so it was a must-buy for me, especially because I found it on sale, I think for like $5 on Amazon, and if the volumes keep going on sale like that, I will definitely purchase more. Uh, it's got a nice matte cover, definitely definitely worth, worth picking up if you are a Noragami fan. Next up, One Piece, number 75, and Yes, there are 75 volumes of One Piece, and yes, I do own them all. That is something I have to say. Every time someone sees my manga collection, or they see this in my house, they're like, really? I'm like, yes, they do. They really do have that many volumes of One Piece. Um, that's how often a complaint I've heard, and I really don't see it as a fair one, especially because One Piece, I mean, the quality is still very good. Like, Dressrosa has not been that fantastic an arc, but it's still better than most shonen content these days, so... Yeah, there are really 75 volumes of One Piece, and this, like the rest of them, uh, is really good. But, you know, if, unless you're a One Piece super fan like I am, you can probably skip it. Alrighty, next up, all four of these, I have the first four volumes of Pokemon Adventures. So you got Volume 1, uh, Volume 2, with my favorite Pokemon, Ivy Sir. Uh, volume 3, which is considerably thicker than the others, actually. And Volume 4, with yellow on it. 
Uh, I found these used at a bookstore called Half Price Books in the south suburbs of south. Excuse me, the south suburbs of Chicago. So that was very exciting. I actually have had a couple of comments on my manga videos recommending that I pick these up, and I actually have read Pokemon Adventures before. I read the Red, Blue, Green, and Yellow saga, but I haven't read past there, and that's really a crime considering my favorite game is Pokemon Crystal. I really should read. Uh, the second generation of this manga, because even though it says, like, Viz Kids and all that, and it's obviously written for kids, like, you don't find too much graphic content in it, except for, like, a zombie side of, ugh, that chapter's nasty. Um, it's still a very good story, and if you're, like, tired of the Pokemon anime, where, like, Ash is perpetually 10, it's so annoying, this is definitely the manga for you. It changes protagonists every single generation, and all the protagonists, from what I've seen before, are very likable. They make Gary likable. So, and oh, don't get me wrong, I love Gary, but he's not, he's not a jerk in this one. He's, he's actually quite the developed character. Next up we have, oh boy, uh, Puelai Magi, Homura, Tamara. I have a beef with this comic. Guess how much it is? Just looking on the side, you can see it's pretty thin. Like, this is next to like a standard shonen manga. Look how thin it is. It's like not even half of what you get for that. It is, full retail value, $17. That is ridiculous. Like, Monica is really, really bad about pricing. Like, the regular volumes of Monica are $13 each, and they don't even come close to, like, a regular full volume of manga. Um, the content in this, again, like a lot of Monica manga, I can't really explain what's going on in this story, or else it'll spoil 10 out of, like, 12 or 13 episodes of Monica. And that's really not fair for you guys. Uh, the subtitle is Parallel Worlds Do Not Remain Parallel Forever. So for Monica fans, hopefully that's enough information for what this comic is about. Um, I thought this was going to be like a funny spin-off comic, like uh, this Rock Lee's Springtime of Youth, the spin-off comic for Naruto, which in my opinion is actually better than some of the later parts of Naruto. But the comedy really doesn't work for this. A lot of the jokes fall pretty flat. In fact, the only characters who really get better in this comic with the humor are Kubei and Monica, because Monica herself really doesn't have that much personality in the uh, original anime. So, um, unless you are like a major, major, major Monica fan, do not pick this one up. The price is just, it's not worth it. Um, and also I should clarify, again, you need to watch the series before reading this. Basically before reading any Monica manga. Just don't do it. You will spoil, your, spoil yourself so bad. Alrighty, next up. The Seven Deadly Sins, Volume 9. Uh, again, if you're a Shonen fan and you're not reading this, what are you doing? Get on it! Uh, the action is absolutely incredible in this series. The characters are so good. Uh, the only issue I have with it is sometimes it has some really unnecessary fan service. There's, like, sexual harassment jokes in there, and I, ugh, you know, that's just not my cup of tea. Um, but, you know, I, I really enjoy this, and uh, this covers an arc that is absolutely incredible. In fact, I really haven't experienced a bad arc in this series so far, but there's only like, I think like 14 or 15 volumes in Japan, so I mean, it, it has it has room to grow and to mess up over time, but as it is right now in its beginning stages, it's very, very good, and if you're a Shonen fan, definitely get into it, so yeah. Next up, Soul Eater Nat Volume 5. This concludes the spinoff of Soul Eater. Um, this is a guilty pleasure for me. <laughs> uh, if you were disappointed by uh, the end of Soul Eater, either the manga or the anime, you're going to get disappointed by this end too, because uh, it pulls it pulls something like the Punch of Courage, but it, it has more build-up to it. In fact, it was very satisfying for me. I was like, okay, the way they solve their problem, like, okay, so the whole crux of the series is this girl is a weapon, and she can only be wielded by one Meister, right? So they have her two friends, and the whole series is about, like, oh, who's going to be her partner? And the way they answer it is so ridiculous that it can only be defined as, oh, yeah, that's Soul Leader being Soul Leader. So, um, yeah, if you are a huge Soul Leader fan, I definitely recommend this. It's very funny, uh, very cute ending, very satisfying ending. Uh, but if you didn't like the way Soul Eater was handled, skip it. Just skip it in general. Alrighty, and finally, last up for the manga, we have What a Wonderful World by uh, Inio Asato. Uh, I read Solonin. Solonin is an amazing manga. It's about a couple 
who have graduated college and are trying to figure out their place in the world. This is very, very similar. Uh, it has to deal with a lot of adults. There's not a lot of teeny boppers in this one. My favorite chapter is actually in the first volume. Each of these volumes contain numerous short stories that all um, are contained within the same universe. So some characters influence others, some don't, you know, whatever. Uh, the second chapter of the first volume is about a girl who uh, contemplates uh, her worth in the world and even to the point where she's like kind of thinking about ending her life and there is like this crow character, literally a crow, who like is a personification of death, like constantly like taunting her saying like, hey, you know, like, you know, see those kids making fun of you? Maybe you are worthless, you know, stuff like that. And it's really interesting to see the way that she deals with it. It's absolutely incredible. Great stuff. Um, definitely would recommend this for uh, a manga fan who is a little tired of shonen and shoujo stuff. And then finally, uh, I just, I don't know. It's not really a manga thing, but um, I got a Nendoroid of Yuki from Yuki Yuna is a Hero. It's kind of funny because they define this as uh, the Nendoroid of Yuki Yuna Hero Edition, but I don't know. I don't think they're going to make any more Nendoroids from this series. It's just not popular enough, I think, to justify it. Uh, but I really like it. Um, I guess I should probably hold it up to the camera a little more. There we go. Uh, she's super, super cute. Um, I really, really enjoy Yukino as a hero. If you're a fan of Monica, uh, definitely check it out. It's well worth your time. Um, I really, really enjoyed it. Enough to get this. Uh, then again, I'm a huge fan of Enderites. I have like nine of them now. Jeez. Um, so yeah, it was worth it to get that. So thanks for watching my video. Like and subscribe if you'd like to see more. Uh, you can check out some of my other videos, which I'll probably put around my head here. I do anime reviews and I do like little opinion videos. So yeah, definitely check those out too. And uh, thanks for watching. Until next time, this is CJ, signing off.